Good morning. It's Friday morning, November the 6th, 2020. I'm Pastor Mike Custer, the pastor at Bible Baptist Church in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and I'm glad to be able to share some thoughts with you from God's Word this morning. We just started Matthew chapter 12 in our morning devotional time, and yesterday we talked a little bit about the people who were so critical of Christ because he didn't do exactly what they wanted him to do in uh, keeping the Sabbath days. And he used a number of illustrations for why it wasn't wrong to do what he was doing. And one of the illustrations was, you know, if you have a, a beast that falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, do you say, oh, I can't let him out. It's the Sabbath day. No, of course not. You go and get your beast out of the pit. And so he was going to heal a man that had a withered hand and he was doing good and basically told the people that God is God over the Sabbath days. The Sabbath days are not God's over us. And so the Sabbath day serves man rather than man uh, being in a position where he should be serving the Sabbath day. And he went ahead and healed the man with the withered hand on that day and took a lot of criticism and took a lot of uh, uh, vitriol from the Pharisees and the religious establishment because of it. In fact, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 14, the Bible says, Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against them, against him, excuse me. They, the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. They were thinking that they wanted to put him to death. They were so upset and so angered over his making them feel small and making them look small in the eyes of the people. And what is this but pride? In this case, it was religious pride. And somebody might say it was spiritual pride, but there wasn't anything very spiritual about it. It was a very carnal thing. And pride is indeed a very dangerous sin and one that can cause us a lot of destructiveness in our life. Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And let me read a couple of verses from the Psalms with you on the subject of pride. Psalm 10, 2 says, The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. And then just two verses later, Psalm 10, verse 4 says, The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. And this is actually precisely what was happening with these religious leaders in Jesus' day. God was not in their thoughts. If they were not seeking after God, in fact, they began to persecute Christ, who was the very Son of God, God in human flesh, because he would not submit to them and cater to their ideas that would cause them to be elevated in the eyes and the minds of the people. They hated him for it. God is not in all that person's thoughts. And this is the great danger of pride because it takes our eyes off of the Lord and puts my eyes on me so that I become so important and I am easily offended because somebody didn't do what I thought they should do. And so therefore I become angry with them because they're not stroking my ego and they're not making me feel uh, significant before others, especially making me appear significant in, in the eyes of other people, making me feel important in my own eyes. These people became so angry with Christ because he wouldn't cater to them in their pride, their, their religious pride, that they said, let's, let's get rid of him, let's put him to death. What a terrible and destructive and violent spirit came forth, boiled to the surface in these people who were supposed to be spiritual people and very religious-minded people. I think it's significant that in Bible history and in the history of the world since the time of Christ, it seems like those who persecute the believers most vehemently are those who are religious leaders and they have their basis in their religion. And the truth causes them to be put to error. The Bible tells us that it exposes their false views and stirs up their pride. What a sad thing that is, that somebody who's supposed to be following the Lord, who's supposed to be submitting to God, walking to God, walking with God, even as a religious leader, as a spiritual guide, can become so carnal 
when their own turf is invaded, when their own reputation is put in question. And may God help us to be humble. The Bible says that God uh, exalts the humble and gives grace to the to the lowly. And, and whereas he puts down the proud, and we put ourselves in a very dangerous position when we get focused on ourselves instead of being focused on the Lord. May God help you today to be focused on him instead of focused on yourself. And may you give him the glory and the honor and be led by the spirit and be controlled by God's spirit rather than being controlled by uh, a wicked spirit of selfishness and pride. God help you today.